You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcast, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for December 18th, 2020. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the world headquarters of the Cornfield Resistance, where we know it is not proper to call Republicans a bunch of fuckers because we're writers and we know the proper term of venery for Republicans is a cluster of fuckers. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. What? You just got a notification? Oh, just it, the, the Windows um, um, security system tells me every now and then that everything's okay. Uh-huh. You don't need to tell me that. The doctor doesn't need to rush in and say, by the way, you're fine. You know, that's, <laughs> that's not necessary. <laughs> I thought you got a notification that you'd been hacked by Russian hackers. No, 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 no. no. Just oh, the, that's the entire federal government. I'm sorry. Yeah, not me. The entire federal government, with one exception. Hillary Clinton's server. Hillary Clinton's server was not hacked by the Russian government. No, okay. I, well, I think I think we mentioned the simultaneous car failure and that it's possibly related to Russian. Possibly. <laughs> we don't know for sure. Neither one of our cars started today. Right. It was for, for two entirely different reasons. One had to do with the fuel pump, one had to do with polonium. So too soon, drift glass. Too Wait, soon? Too soon. Is that too soon? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> Hey, Drift Glass. Hey, Blue Gal. Twas the podcast before Christmas. It was. I don't think I've ever sworn as immediately after it's not safe for work as I have ever done in this podcast. I think that's probably we'd, – we'd have to go back and listen to all uh, 577 episodes to make been, sure. All 500 – okay. Well, <laughs> let's, get some, let's get one of our interns right on that so we can find <laughs> out about that. And, and we actually, we have, a, we have a, an anniversary coming up. Yeah, well, we I wanted to sort of review it where our ca- we are on our calendar because next Friday uh-huh. is Christmas Day. It is. And we will be podcasting. And then the following Friday is New Year's Day and we will be podcasting. Uh-huh. And then we have January 8th, which is another podcast day. That's great. Then January 15th. And January 15th is our 11th anniversary. <gasps> Wait a minute. 11th anniversary. podcast. But, but according to all the... Uh, podcasts i listen to like uh-huh. the bulwark uh podcasting's only been around for two years how can you possibly have an 11 year anniversary in a technology and a, and a means of transportation drift glass if you believe yeah. that history has only been around for four years fair enough blue gal fair <laughs> enough obviously we're lying because history began in 2016 when there were all those nice republicans discovered that their party was full of republicans uh-huh and then they ran a guy named David French because they'd rather not get icky Hillary cooties on them by voting for her. And here we are. So you're right, Blue Gal. What was I thinking? And I believe, you know, we're in the middle of another reset because the the calendar, unlike we have we have the Julian calendar and the Gregorian calendar, and pretty soon we're going to have the Republican calendar. Mm-hmm, the Republican absolutely. Calendar is just, it just gets reset every 18 months. Mm-hmm. Every 18 months is the new year zero so that – Whatever happened during the Obama administration and whoever called Obama a whole bunch of horrid shit and talked nonstop crap about him and ran horrible racist ads against him, those people are now never Trumpers. And therefore, Obama really – who knows what happened? And the people who are uh, diehard Trump fans, what we call Republicans, who will be exiting the uh, the cult, not leaving the crazy, but who will become the Patriot Party. Or something mm-hmm, else. Mm-hmm, uh, the new year mm-hmm. zero will be the moment Joe Biden puts his hand on the Bible, and that at that yeah, point, yeah. Republicans will suddenly discover their great love of of uh, uh, fiscal conservatism, which they've never believed in. We're already seeing that. I mean, yeah. we're already seeing the argument today. You mm-hmm. know, we got to we got to worry about the deficit now because basically Donald Trump has checked out. I mean, I thought yeah. George W. Bush checked out at the end of his term. He did. Th- it's but, nothing like this. No, this is just. Meh. Who cares? Who's in charge? I don't know. But Who's in charge? Drift class, do you know what the traditional wedding anniversary gift is for 11 years? Which we will have our, what, 10th wedding anniversary next well, August. Yeah. Well, I know the 11th anniversary podcast anniversary is traditionally mm-hmm. uh, clutched pearls. Is that right? <laughs> 
No, I got to tell you, I, the puns are going to come fast fast on this one. Uh-oh. It's steel. Steel? With an extra Michael e Steel. for savings? Yeah. For the savings belong to you? <laughs> you have to give us Michael Steele uh, as yeah. a gift somehow. I, I don't know I how do that's going to work out. I do a wicked Michael Steele impersonation, so I'll 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 give you all that. Come All right. right. Um, yeah, speaking of <laughs> clutched pearls... Um, yeah, and and Republican resets the the uh, entire Washington area is apparently crunchy under a thick layer of shattered pearls from all the clutching over um, the proposed assistant deputy chief of staff to Joe Biden mm-hmm. called Republicans a bunch of fuckers. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Marco Rubio apparently had kittens, uh, literally yeah, had a, a litter of kittens on the, on the floor of the Senate. Uh, there is nothing on other than uh, Hunter Biden stuff on fox news right now other than oh my god potty mouth potty mouth potty mouth Um, well hunter biden sent an email to a chinese businessman mm -hmm. saying greetings from the whole family in 2017 well that's it and that was the lead story on tucker yeah on thursday wednesday night wednesday night The lead story was Hunter Biden sent because it had all the code words. It had Hunter Biden, had email, had China. China. You know, if if you can get all those, it doesn't matter that it's utterly meaningless. Also, they didn't mention that it's if when you say Chinese businessman, it's quite possibly Mm -hmm. Mitch McConnell's father-in-law that received the email. Shut up. Shut up. You're not supposed to say you things know. like that. You're not supposed to mention that Mitch McConnell is up to his. It also might be a businessman who gave Ivanka Trump several trademarks. You don't know that either. It could be Little Saigon, which is a an Asian restaurant down the block from us. <laughs> it could. You don't know. I mean, which which is not actually Vietnamese. It serves a variety of, of Asians. They serve but, Thai and Vietnamese and Chinese, Chinese. and yeah. everything. But you don't know the context, and and here's the important part: mm-hmm. the context doesn't matter. The no, context right. is irrelevant. It has all the buzzwords in it. It ha- the- Well, they're not just buzzwords. They're brainwashing keywords. words. All the right. keywords. That's right. Yep, how, about, yep. how about a nice game of solitaire, wing nuts? And yes, they just right. And they're playing the cards boom. until yeah. Queen of Diamonds comes up. And then suddenly, oh, my God, the Democrats are full of socialism. We must. And and that's just rinse and repeat. That's, that's, uh, that is the um, background. That's the white noise mm-hmm. uh, for the next, you know, 20 years. That's just going to, it's going to keep, it's going to fade into the background. It's going to just Doppler away, but that's not going anywhere. January 20th is not a magic day. It's not going anywhere. It will go underground. It'll morph into something else. It'll wear a different hat. Um, it'll be, I, I, Donald Trump did all these great things, which um, is basically the theme of Darren LaHood's entire op-ed, which we'll get to in local news. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Uh, apparently Donald Trump's dick tastes like Belgian chocolate. Um, I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't need that, that visual. So, I did not need that. But, but, you know, way down in the 27th paragraph, it's like, however, there were some problems, but he deserves, you know, the uh, something constitution voter fraud. That mm-hmm. sort of shit's going to be all over the place. It's going to, as Republicans fondly remembered the George Bush administration, all the good things, you know, mosquito netting, for goodness sakes, blue gal. Um, and as Nicole Wallace compressed her entire time at the White House I- into my former boss, whatever you think of him. Mm-hmm. Um the, the the Trump administration, because there's 74, 75 million idiots out there who think he is the greatest president who ever lived, will suddenly become a record of triumph after triumph after triumph by, by a, a difficult man, uh, but mm-hmm. a great man. And there and that's just going to become their mythology. That's going to become the stabbed in the back myth. He, and the presidency was stolen from him by a bunch of socialists who hate Merca. And if you don't know if you're a socialist or not, you should check under your chair because everyone's a socialist now. We're all socialists. The governor, Brian Kemp, the governor of Georgia, is now a socialist. And remember, right. John right. Roberts is now a member of the deep state. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it really is. It, it It is just you're always one tick away from being declared an enemy of the people. Right. And, and Drift Glass, let me stop you there because we're rushing very fast through our theme for Political University Part oh, 6. Yes. yes, yes. And you have – in our notes about the fight to define the center. But I, I think it goes further than that. Um, every term that we use, we're fighting over definition. That's we're fighting true. over definition of who is a true American. Uh-huh. We're, and we're fighting over definition of who a real doctor is yep. this week uh, because they don't have anything else on the new first lady. 
They don't have anything else on Joe Biden except, oh, my God, she calls herself a doctor and she's an uppity woman, too big for her britches. Mm -hmm. Uh, She's really Dr. Zeus. Ha ha ha. And it's utter misogyny. Uh, We all know that. And and everyone and my Twitter thread came to her defense quite virulently. But uh, it's a question of defining her as the enemy. And and now we have. Uh, you know, you talk about pearl clutching. We talk who is defining what is obscene. Mm-hmm. And I really liked what Bradley Whitford said on Twitter this week. He said, swear words aren't obscene. Economic injustice, racism, homophobia, tearing innocent children from their mothers, lack of access to health care, treating the planet with contempt, undermining democracy. 3,000 unfucking necessary deaths a day. Mm-hmm. That's obscene. Yep. Yep. And sure Marco is. Rubio clutching his pearls in the midst of all of that over the F word is also obscene. But let's get back to your point about defining the center, because I think overall in in the grand scheme of the next four years and the media, that is a big ticket item. Well, and I'll just as a brief aside. um mm-hmm. Back in 2008, I, I just mm-hmm. pulled it up in, in July of 2008. I wrote a post uh, called Unshouting Fuck. I wrote the, on the same topic, Drift Glass. <laughs> Isn't that strange? I think at that point, again, people were getting all pearl clutchy about, you know. Someone liberals was getting pearl clutchy. Over naughty language that liberals were using. In the blogs, and yeah. It, yes. What I wrote was, before we can fix what is wrong with America, we must confront the ugly reality that these failed, morally inbred Christopaths are the problem. That mm-hmm. simple, terrifying fact will never, ever, ever show up on TV, and that is fucking obscene. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the problem mm-hmm. is with this country is the Republican Party, and and mm-hmm. since we're not allowed to discuss it in those terms on television, that's obscene. Everything else flows from that. All the other problems flow from that. That you can't talk about what's really wrong because it, it might calling Republicans by their right names, by their true names, is so offensive that it can't be mentioned on television. That's obscene. That's mm-hmm. horrifying. That's the thing you really can't talk about. You can you can say shithole on television because Donald Trump said shithole. And you can drop an F-bomb and not get fired. But you start talking about Republicans as a party built on bigots and imbeciles to be a fascist battering ram. And you will never be on television again. You'll be banned from the from television for the rest of your life. That is how they treat true obscenity on television, what they believe to be true obscenity, telling the truth about those people is an obscenity. As you know, my dear, I, I considered applying for work with the Obama administration. Yes. I, I thought I would make a crackerjack um, under Secretary of Labor for Manufacturing mm-hmm. in the Midwest because mm-hmm. that, that was damn near my job before I was laid off. And I was good at it and I was well-respected and I had all the contacts and I spoke the language and it would have been awesome. So I opened up the you know 29-page Obama administration you know, income. Seriously application yeah. and it was you know it was all like turn your pockets out and then it got to be the part where have you ever under any circumstances in any venue in any email in any podcast in any uh, blog commentary section on any newspaper said anything that might in any way be considered um inappropriate or derogatory or in any way insulting or in any way reflect badly on the administration right. and that's when i tore it up and threw it away because <laughs> it's like oh yeah that's what i do all day now this is what um, I'm a blogger, so yes, I, I am now automatically disqualified from from joining because I, I I I use fuck when I write. I use the entire English language. I'm a, I'm a writer, so I, I I own the whole English language, but I do use pejoratives. I do use curse words, and I use them, I believe, correctly, except when I punctuate them wrong. And so I was having a grand old time going. Well, I guess that's going to be you know this, this moral exemplar of an administration that should be interesting. Oh, look. Rahm Emanuel's going to be the chief of staff. <laughs> oh, oh, I guess there's a yeah. couple of different standards for a couple of different people. Which which brings me to uh, Jen O'Malley Dillon. Right, exactly. Uh, who, you know, if Rick Wilson tweeted this out, mm-hmm. Republicans are a bunch of fuckers. And it wasn't an interview of a woman in the Biden administration uh, talking that way in Glamour magazine. Mm-hmm. The standards are very different. They really are. Ooh, he's inside salty. and outside. Yeah, he's salty. He's a badass. I'm sure he'll he'll get he'll kick ass and take names. That's mm-hmm. it. Would just it would go unnoticed. Hey, 
Rahm Emanuel, people used to make jokes, including Obama, about Rahm Emanuel chopping his middle finger off and losing half his vocabulary. You know, <laughs> yes. I mean, literally, because he, he is missing a finger. And it, it's, yeah. it's, it is, it was so baked in, oh, Rahm Emanuel swears all the time. He threatens people all the time. And, and he covers up for murder as well, as we know, as he went on to be mayor and, mm-hmm. and did that. And it was just, well, that's just who he is. So let's move on to the next thing. And then, of course, it came to be um, Barack Obama said uh, something mean about the police, you know, mm-hmm. locking up Skip Gates, arresting him in his own home. And, and, and this is exactly what happened. The right lost yeah. its fucking mind. And mm-hmm. suddenly the, the incoming administration is back on its heels trying to apologize for saying something that was manifestly true that got a bunch of hypocritical scumbag racists a fake uh, outrage. And the difference mm-hmm. is they have a fucking megaphone. Yeah. They can scream. They're in the press room. There there are no liberal bloggers in the White House press corps, I don't believe. There are Fox News, however, is a, is a network. And so when they decide that we're we're all going to be outraged all day long about Barack Obama insulting the police, mm-hmm. we're going to force them off their game and make them apologize and make them have a beer summit so that he can say he's real sorry that he called police a cop stupid. And it, they're doing it again. And I can understand that when you're the incoming Biden people and you have like a, you know, a no margin for error and your entire brand is let's bring the nation together. This might be problematic. But the correct answer is, you know what? She said some shit. People say shit all the time. Hey, yep. let's talk about let's talk about Donald Trump. She's in politics. Oh, right. She's in politics and she says shit. Yes. And, and just have someone stand in front of a microphone and read off all the shit that Donald Trump has said and tweeted mm-hmm. in public and in mm-hmm. private and, and on yep. Twitter and say, really? We're going to do outrage now. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's, you know, they're not doing that. And that just pisses me right off. I understand why they're not doing it. That, you know, they haven't been sworn in yet. And it's already. Yeah, they're not I'm, president yet. Right. I know. I know. It anyway. drives me crazy. Uh Everybody, we we got about, what, 30 gazillion emails and tweets about, oh, my God, Steve Schmidt is a Democrat now. Yeah. We can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about that. <laughs> okay. I got, um, I got nothing. To you've do. got a lot more to say about it than I do. Yeah, well, I just, you know, after you, darling. After. Well, I, I think it's a big deal in, as I said to you earlier, in the Chardonnay sipping world of, yeah. you know, East Coast media people mm-hmm. who have to put everyone in a slot so that we have representation across the party and political spectrum mm-hmm. that you have to move the Steve Schmidt doll into a Democrat slot right. rather than into a Republican or former Republican or independent or whatever. You have to now define the Steve Schmidt doll, and that's exactly how I feel about it. Mm-hmm. You know, you you have Steve Schmidt and someone else on so right. that they're balanced, that your panel is balanced. And how do you balance out if Steve Schmidt isn't a never Trumper independent and now he actually is a Democrat? I, w- I will say this. I wish more never Trumper bulwark podcast type people in Beltway, you know, Eastern Corridor media. Mm-hmm. would do this, would say, look, we only have one party that is in favor of democracy right now. That's a really important point. And Good. I'm glad he said that. Mm-hmm. I don't. I welcome him as a Democrat, as a registered Democrat. We need as many of those as we can possibly get. Sure. Uh, but I, I agree with you. I think he's done this for, I think his motives are, are not just to defend democracy. This is a career move. Yeah. He wants the very, the most lucrative job that Steve Schmidt is qualified for, folks, is not appearing on MSNBC. <laughs> it's no. buying ads for a political candidate. That's yeah. where the real money is. Yeah. And uh, he, if he can work for Democratic candidates in the future, uh and I'm not saying he's not good at his job because he managed Sarah Palin. So he is good at his job. Uh, if he can uh, help Demo- actually help Democrats win, which I'm sorry, but the Lincoln Project did not help Democrats win in 2020. Oh, they did not. They did not. So yeah. if, he no- can, if he can actually go to work in a ad buying, ad designing 
messaging capacity, campaign capacity to do that. Uh, good for him. Mm-hmm. Um, he isn't going to work for Howard Schultz anymore, apparently. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> but, but that's there's the clue, right? There's right. the clue as to what Steve Schmidt wants to do in his career and the kind of money he can make doing it. So, yeah, it, it is it is a fill in the blank game mm-hmm. with most of these gentlemen. Um, I value liberty so much that, <laughs> and then you fill in a blank. It's like mm-hmm. that I became a Republican and brought Sarah Palin to the table. I right. value liberty <laughs> so much that I just couldn't bear having Donald Trump as president. But I'm going to stay a Republican. I value liberty so much that I'm now an independent. And let me tell you, AOC is just as bad as Donald Trump. These are all positions right. that Steve Schmidt has, has taken. Last, yes, in the it last is. five minutes. You I are value remembering liberty. shit, Driklass. <laughs> I value liberty so much that I'm going to go work for Howard Schultz, who's a mm-hmm. third-party spoiler because he's going to give me a lot of, oh, that money's gone. I value liberty so much that I'm an independent again, maybe a Republican, and now it's, oh, now I'm a Democrat. Mm-hmm. Great. That's great. You are uh, you are Tony Curtis in Some Like It Hot. You are <laughs> hiding out in, in drag, mm-hmm. and, and maybe you will come to enjoy it. Maybe this will become your new lifestyle. Um, maybe you'll be Jack Lemon and you can't have children, but it doesn't matter. Nobody's perfect. You know, who knows how your, how your little movie will end. I do know that Franklin Graham and William Barber are both professed Christians. Mm-hmm. Now, if you mm-hmm. are inclined to say, wait a minute, <laughs> one of them works really hard and has for his entire life on behalf of poor people. And one of them is, is a grifting scumbag who who has been devoted his life to playing off his dad's legacy and ripping people off while standing behind a cross and calling himself a Christian. Mm-hmm. Now, that's one perspective. But if that's true, then please don't fault me when I say, you know what? There are pro- a lot of professed Democrats and a whole bunch of them signed up five minutes ago. Mm-hmm. And they were mm-hmm. down with the whole Republican Party for 30 years. Maybe they all just spontaneously decided, you know what? We should leave. And they all left. Uh, maybe that's true. And maybe time will tell that. But I I don't believe Franklin Graham and William Barber are in the same fucking universe as each other, despite the fact that Christians are called not to judge each other. And despite the fact that they're both professed reverends and they both you know preach in a church Mm -hmm. i do not think steve schmidt is in the same moral universe as bernie sanders Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or aoc Mm -hmm. Uh, i think he's awfully close to uh um joe lieberman (laughs) yeah you know there's a whole lot of people in the the democratic party who i'd be very happy to show the exit and lieberman is one of them i believe that steve schmidt and and joe manchin could you know share a bottle of scotch and, and agree on ninety percent of shit? Like everyone else in this party is a goddamn socialist, but what are you going to do? This is all we got. Um, so I'm perfectly willing to wait and see what happens, but I do still. Let me say for the record once again, I do object to the fact that there are forty seats on cable TV, right? And all of these never Trumpers are given free first class preferred seating. When it comes to discussing every goddamn issue, everything. And no if Steve what, Schmidt a, goes to work for a Democratic Senate candidate, I hope that Democratic Senate candidate wins. Oh, yeah, I absolutely do. But I also know that Steve Schmidt will have a seat on MSNBC the day after the election, win or lose. And let's be clear. And no one will ask him, how, why did your candidate lose? Why weren't you able to bring them across the finish line, Steve? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, and, that question won't be asked. And Steve Schmidt has a job on MSNBC for one reason, because Nicole Wallace has her own show. Mm-hmm. That's the only reason he's there, because he set his his career on fire. He blew up his own his own podcast, and he done, he he shit on everything he'd said about got to get rid of Trump at all costs when he went to work for Howard Schultz. Mm-hmm. And when the money ran out, and he had no place else to go. Where does he go? His friend, Nicole Wallace, who will give him a seat at the table. And suddenly we're all going to agree to forget all that shit ever happened. And I'm sorry, but I don't forget. I forgive, but I don't forget. And I don't trust people who insist that uh, who've done this shit over and over and over again. This time you can trust me. No, no. This Mm -hmm. time you're going to steal my goddamn clock radio and pawn it and buy more drugs. 
That's right. what's going to happen. So I need you all to go into rehab for like five years <laughs> and, and, and go away. Go do something else. Is there nothing else on earth these people can do? And, and if there isn't, how is it they move from first class seat to first class seat to first class seat and never step aside and say, you know what? Maybe somebody who hasn't been wrong for the last 30 years should be sitting here talking about why Donald Trump is a bad person. But it's human nature to trust your friends. That's yeah. why. Well, and so I want I, you to talk about Denver Riggleman. Yeah. I was going to say Joe Scarborough last the, early this week was, was whining about, you know, I don't, I'm not going to get new friends. <laughs> yeah. So, he said, yeah. I'm not going to get new friends. All my friends are Republicans who love Trump. Yeah. I'm not going to get new friends. You, you get, get new friends. friends. You get new friends. Well, you know, you were, and remember, Joe Scarborough is Matt Gates 1.0. Oh, absolutely. He's an asshole frat same boy. Same district. Yeah, same district who came to power with Newt Gingrich and has been sailing along as a Republican shithead for years until and who is using his television show to sell the lie that he never backed Donald Trump. He's, he was the leader of the that if there's a, one hero in all of this blue gal, it's Joe it's, Scarborough. It's Joe Scarborough, yes. <laughs> and how did he get away with it? By controlling the camera, by never yeah. pointing the camera at anyone who will correct him on this. And that's why it's Terribly important that if we had our own liberal network, if we had a, a liberal funders like like our own Rupert Murdoch, who has spent billions of dollars building a liberal network, I wouldn't give a shit what Joe Scarborough has to say. But command of the cameras right now is terribly important. And the people who run the cameras are not our friends. This is what we talked about last week. So, yeah, Denver Riggleman is a half-term congressman from Virginia. Okay. He won in 2018. This is a guy who's been a, a Republican his entire life. He's also a noted Bigfoot erotica expert, which I didn't know was a thing. Bigfoot and erotica? Expert, <laughs> yes. He wrote, he wrote a book that ironically detailed the mating habits of Bigfoot and would now like people to quit reminding him that he wrote it. So, okay, that's fine. He's a, he's a, a distillery owner and a, he's a Republican. He's a lifelong Republican, 50 years old, I think. Been a Republican his whole life. And ran for Congress and won in 2018. And he won with Donald Trump's full-throated support uh, and endorsement, even though Trump clearly had no idea who Riggleman was or that he wasn't a congressman and that his Den and his Twitter handle wasn't at Denver Riggleman. So Donald Trump <laughs> just sort of said, he came out and was like, oh, he's helped us so much with, you know, uh, tax cuts and the military and our great vets before he was ever fucking elected to anything. So Donald Trump gave him the boilerplate. He's a good, close, personal friend of mine, and I couldn't mm -hmm. do it without him. Um, mm -hmm. And got his Twitter handle wrong. But he endorsed him. And that was great. Denver Riggleman got to win. He got to go to Congress. And where he voted pretty much straight party line the entire time and voted against impeaching Donald Trump twice, a very well-behaved Republican, until he officiated at the same-sex marriage of a couple of friends of his. Oh, and that's wow. when the Virginia Republican Party burned him at the stake. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they ran a, a wing nut against him in the primary and mm -hmm. pushed him right out of office. So he is a mm -hmm. literally hasn't even served a full term. He was a half term Republican congressman who got in based on the endorsement of Donald Trump and mm -hmm. it being a lifelong Republican. And suddenly in 2018 or 19, once he'd been primaried, once he'd lost his job, he suddenly discovered the Republican Party was full of Republicans. Yeah. <laughs> Vipers, vipers everywhere. And <laughs> Donald Trump was not a nice man. Oh, my God. And that's what made him the perfect guest to be on the uh, Bulwark podcast. <laughs> where he got to talk a lot about how you don't – liberals don't understand how hard it is to fight against these people. <laughs> Charlie Sykes is like, you know, I've been fighting against Donald Trump for as long as World War II went on. <laughs> which, which is like a very puffed up way of saying wow, four, I, one year, four and a half more yeah, years huh? four, four maybe five years and i'm like okay it really is wonderful us, that he can remember world war ii while while still insisting that history began in late 2015 the thing and and they're all like you know lefties don't understand i'm now quoting we're exhausted we're beaten down we're not going to win all these things. Yeah, no, no liberal and, knows what it's like to and, fight against conservatism. Denver Riggleman, and, and this is Charlie Sykes. And the temptation is to get in the RV, and just go and just go to the lake or go to the mountains, you know. And like, I don't have an RV. Charlie. You mean your third house? 
<laughs> I'm be Charlie. I don't have a house, house that you, you bought with the money you made yeah, being yeah, yeah. the putting the Rush Limbaugh of the Midwest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Of, of, of inventing Ron Johnson among other people. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. So, so, but it's very hard. Liberals don't understand how hard it is to fight against <laughs> Donald Trump all this time. And thank you very much for the 20 million downloads we've had this month. And, and we now have Bulwark Plus where you can subscribe to this. And like, you're making money hand over fist because you've decided time began in 2016, 2015. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and I'm like, you know, it's just, I don't know what to say. Um, yeah. Yes, you were fighting against the bad man starting in 2005 years ago, let's say. Liberals have been fighting against the bad man, the, 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 the party that created the bad man, while you were trying to destroy us for 30 years, for 40 but years. Let's, but let's get back to the theme of this university, which is yes. the Bulwark and Charlie Sykes and Denver Riggleman and Steve Schmidt are all now deciding that the center is, is them. them. Is them. And the reason I know this is because last night, between my toes, I looked up <laughs> on my TV set and I saw Brian Williams. Uh, talking. Let me sit, let me read this part because oh, I just think it's so funny. <laughs> Brian Williams was reading aloud from the Bulwark website. <laughs> yes, he was. Yes, he was. And then he stopped because he wanted to ask a question of Rick Wilson. <laughs> Rick Wilson. By the way, uh, uh, let me stop reading this Bulwark for a moment and ask Rick Wilson, who, by the way, as Brian Williams said, helped found the super PAC that played a huge role in beating Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, is Donald Trump a poopy poop head? Is he as big a poopy poop head as we all are beginning to believe he is? Rick Wilson? Why, yes, Brian Williams, he <laughs> is. And this is a dramatic reenactment <laughs> of what you saw in MSNBC. Free of charge. Free of charge. And because, you know, no, but, no, but Brian Williams did actually say helped found the super PAC that played a huge role in beating Donald Trump. He role. said that. He yes. said, yeah. Yes. And, and is Donald Trump really as bad as we all think he is? Because, mm -hmm. you know, no mere liberal could answer that question. You're going <laughs> to have the founder of the super PAC that defeated Donald Trump on the air. And, you know, and there's James Carvel, who's at this point just a dry apple on a stick. You know, <laughs> on a screen with a going, you know, that's just true. What my friend over here, Rick, said, you know, Trump's a real bad guy and, you know, stuff like that. And I'm like, <laughs> this is the best you can do, really. And so, you know, it's it's comical. And Rick's, got, you know, Rick's got a million problems and I'm not one of them anymore since he blocked me. But the yeah. point <laughs> being, the point being that every time you watch something on television, whether it's the Flintstones or Gunsmoke or mm -hmm, ER mm -hmm. or The Mandalorian, someone is telling you a story. It might be mm -hmm. a 30-second story on an ad or it might be an hour-long story or it might, be, you know, it might be epic. But someone is telling you a story. What is the story you are being told, either explicitly or implicitly, by political media? You're being told that Rick Wilson and Charlie Sykes and the Bulwark podcast and Denver Riggleman and Jennifer Horn, who's a uh, uh, I'll mention her now, the former New Hampshire GOP chair and co-founder of that super PAC that brought Donald Trump to his knees, announced yesterday she's leaving the Republican Party. It's become clear to me in the last 30 seconds that the party of Lincoln is no more. And today's Republican Party cannot coexist with the idea that we know uh, no America can be. Again, another Republican who's suddenly discovered lifelong Republican GOP mm -hmm, chair. Mm -hmm, oh, mm -hmm, and I'm mm -hmm. like, really? You have all these, and all these people are now defining what this reasonable center is. Mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. the reasonable center is, is the Republican Party, is the elite shell of the former Republican Party is now the center. And I know it's the center because they keep telling mm -hmm. me on the television over and over again, this is, these are the reasonable people you should listen to. And it, it is, it is just making, give me a little tiny headache right behind my right eye, <laughs> thinking about how... There are so many other people in the universe who could be saying these things and talking sensibly about politics and explaining how we got here, what we're doing. And, and you have narrowed it down to this tiny band of former Republicans who are saying shit liberals were saying 20 and 30 years ago without acknowledging that there is a left at all. Uh, the left is just AOC. And Bernie, because that's mm -hmm. the extreme left. And, and so these people are in the middle. They're the center. They're the sacred, holy center. They're where, and, and think about it. 
If this is the center, imagine, think about how far to the right the center has been dragged in the last four years. Mm -hmm. That Steve Schmidt and Rick Wilson and Charlie Sykes are now the sensible center. And I know that because Brian Williams and Joe Scarborough tell me so. And that is disastrous. Because that it's, means it's something you really need to be alert. It's, it's hard to listen for it be when you're listening to whatever cable news show you're watching. Keep an ear out for that. Are they defining what is American, what is reasonable, what is profane or not, mm -hmm. and what is the center? Because from that point, they then branch out to, well, I'm the reasonable one, I'm the true American, I'm the centrist, and therefore my position on tax cuts for billionaires mm -hmm. is the reasonable centrist position. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what they're going to do. And keep an eye out for who is telling the story. And who is telling is you, the right. Story of the, right. The, 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 what happened to the Republican Party being told to you by someone who's been telling that same story, Norm Ornstein, mm -hmm. Digby, Park, right. Right. anybody who's been right for years, are they the ones who are being given this extremely rare and valuable piece of real estate to talk about the problems? Or is it people who swear to you that everything was fine until four years ago? And or everything was fine until regular Republican Congress people signed on to the Texas lawsuit. Right. Because there's a lot of people starting history at that point mm -hmm. and saying, I can no longer be a part of this party because regular Republican congressmen decided to overturn an election. Yeah, that's too bad. Electing Donald Trump in 2016 wasn't bad enough, but this is bad. Yeah, 300,000. you're defining it that way. Yeah, 300,000 300, dead, American, dead Americans not, not isn't enough. enough. Mm -hmm. separating babies from their mothers, not, no, that wasn't bad enough. It's this moment that I decided to have a conscience. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to, A, remember the past, and B, know where we stand. Mm -hmm. And we stand to the left of these people, and we, we are do. center. We, We're in the actual center of the country, so well, in so if, many ways. So if you look at where actual issues are polling, should we have a public health care system that you can afford to have? Should college be affordable and in some cases free? All of, gun yeah. control, all of the issues, actual issues, pull well to the left of the reasonable center. Way Absolutely. to the left of the reasonable center. Should we, raise, should we raise taxes on rich people? Yeah, pretty much everybody agrees with that. So the center you are being asked to buy is not the center at all. It's where the Republican Party was five years ago. That's all. And, they, and they want that to be the Democratic Party. That's why they're invading the place and, and taking over as spokespeople for the party. And that why they're saying, you know, I, I suppose, you know, AOC and I can work together. No, <laughs> dude, you showed up at the party late mm -hmm. and you're, not, you were, you're out front screaming about what a bunch of assholes the people in that party were for the last, for the rest of your, for your entire adult life. Here's what you should do. Grab a red cup with some free beer, go sit in the corner and shut the fuck up for five years. That whole that whole wanting to get AOC's attention last yeah. weekend oh, on nice. on Twitter had a, you know it wasn't just Steve Schmidt it was other people too, uh, too who really you should have a legitimate debate with me on Twitter <laughs> AOC and it really had this I don't have a date for New Year's AOC how dare you not pay attention to me the bitch won't pay attention to me. Yeah. As a former bartender in New York City, yeah. I think AOC knows how to deal with assholes like that. Yeah. I'm just saying. Um, I want to talk about Kyle Becker for a minute. Kyle is a, quote, independent journalist, former associate producer, writer at Fox News, former director of Viral Media, and he's now on Parlor Drift Glass. I hear, I hear good things about Parlor. No, you don't. Oh, yeah. uh, Kyle pulled a short clip of random hearsay without context of some person spouting nonsense on C-SPAN. And he overnight turned it into a wingnut cause celeb. Do you wonder why the Texas case was dropped by the Supreme Court? Here's why. A staffer, this is all Kyle, Kyle's story. A staffer heard screaming through the walls as Justice Roberts and other liberal justice were insisting this case not be taken up. I don't give a blah, blah, blah about Bush v. Gore. At that time, we didn't have riots. Right. It was the threat of liberals rioting. Rioting. That, that made, made the liberal. Terrified the Supreme Court into not taking up Donald Trump's case and overturning the election. And, and notice, so, the, now, notice, the, 
the sentence <laughs> construction, Justice Roberts and other liberal justices. Right. Right. John Roberts is now a liberal are justice. in the minority. <laughs> John Roberts is now a liberal, just oh, so he's you know. A liberal. Oh, and yeah, he's a liberal, and they think they've got photos of him with Epstein. Actually, they're, those are Donald Trump. Um, Donald Trump has lots of photos with Epstein, by the way. He does. Uh, Snopes has thoroughly debunked this. And by the way, the Supreme Court isn't meeting in the same room a- at true. all. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, but, you know, Snopes is a tool of George Soros, so you have to completely discount that. Uh, Kevin Cruz also responded on Twitter, anyone who believes this very real story about the SCOTUS justices who have not been in the same room since March due to COVID should contact me immediately about the special magic beans I have for sale. Uh <laughs> None of this, none of the debunking has made the slightest difference, as you might expect. Uh, the Twitter thread was full of wingnuts. Oh, the, uh, I'm sorry. The parlor thread was in full of wingnuts who responded to having their delusion challenged by attacking liberals as intolerant. We're happy to agree to disagree, but you people have to be rude and call us stupid. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you bet you love the um, pitch meeting. I do comedy uh, I do. channel on YouTube oh, where they're doing usually Marvel movies, yeah. but well, it they, did they, remind you of a pitch meeting, right? It did. Uh, uh, where they have an exchange is the same guy taking two roles of a of a studio head and a and a screenwriter, um, talking about the giant plot holes in the very bad movie he's pitching, and so this reminds me of why on earth would they hear arguments remotely, but then have every justice commute in to have an in-person meeting. So the movie can happen. Oh, why would they meet in the same room with ridiculously thin walls with staff they don't need sitting right outside when they could just do that on a conference call? So the movie can happen. Yeah, and it's, so the conspiracy theory the can conspiracy, happen. That's this why. It has right. to be true. These things must be true because I, and I, I can't look. John Roberts has to have a baseball bat with which he is beating the conservative right. judges about the head and shoulders because to force them to betray Donald Trump. Yes. He's so afraid of the liberals rioting because that's yeah, just right. motivating. So it's all about the anti file liberals, you know, riot propensities intimidating these poor people into mm-hmm. not taking up Donald Trump's righteous cause. And, and it doesn't, nothing penetrates these idiots heads they need this to be true they need there to be a deep conspiracy caused by liberals for and that's the reason the supreme court won't take up this case so they just invent shit out of whole cloth and then they invent shit about the shit they just invented and then when you tell them but none of this is true look look we agree to disagree, okay? We're the reason, okay? <laughs> hey, that's just coming, your opinion, man. <laughs> you're the intolerant, man. You come on here and call me stupid just because I think the earth is flat and the sky is orange. Look, I'm the tolerant one, okay? <laughs> I'm the one who wants to live and not live. You have your opinion about reality. I have mine. And it is, at that point, you have to just check out. Oh, okay. Yeah. You are a reprogrammable meatbag. And, mm-hmm. but that was such a, because per- it went from literally just some asshole on C SPAN that was picked up by this Kyle guy and turned into a whole fucking thing for two days. And when it turned well, out, I, this- just, I think the court cannot be untouched by where these people, the way these people are talking about them. Yeah. You know, that they have no agency at all except to be beaten up in person by John Roberts. During the age of COVID. Oh, no. Okay. John Roberts John Roberts is just terrified of, of the Antifa hordes. <laughs> That's the problem. He's, he's terrified because we didn't have riots during Bush v. Gore. And, and, riots. You know, and, and they'll come for me. I know the Antifa will come for me because, yeah, that's what we do. We and that's how Supreme Court justices talk to one another, too. Sure. Yeah, this I, have, I have to because of the Antifa riots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, and at that point, you're listening to a crazy and, person. <laughs> And and wondering they've, they've never they've never read a Supreme Court case in their life. No, it's clearly. full. Of, it's full of fucking shit and nonsense and like these <laughs> fucking fuckers and a kiss my oh, kiss yeah. my yeah. white pasty ass is pretty much what uh, um, John Roberts signs every Supreme Court decision as. Um, and and oh, so kiss my is, white pasty is male a, ass. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. John Roberts. He's known for that. That's how he signs every decision. You know. That's how he does. Um, <laughs> And and the thing that – and this is where you can get you can get lost in the rabbit hole. It's like you have to figure out a point at which you've taken the lesson from this example. 
the lesson is, Mm -hmm. oh, these people are so deep in the conspiracy, so far down the rabbit hole, they will literally believe anything. And they will punch you in the face if you tell, if you show them, you know, positive proof that what they believe is not true. They're lost to reason. Do not try to reason with them, but do try to learn from them. Mm-hmm. Because what you can learn from them is this is the ho- this is the Republican Party. The, this is it. There isn't a better party out there waiting to happen. So this is the this is the unreasonable right that we, my my lovely wife and I, are the counterpoint to. <laughs> Apparently, we're the crazy left that are exactly as bad as the crazy right. And mm-hmm. in the middle, you can find Steve Schmidt and Rick Wilson. <laughs> Just try to – everybody, why can't we all get along and be nice together? Nice. Mm. Um, and the reason is obviously because liberals swear too much. Mm-hmm. There's something about trying for 10 years to take away the health care of my children that gets me sweary, Drift Glass. Yeah. I'm just going to say That's that. That's not going you know? away anytime soon either, is it? No. Nope. 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 Um, we have three uh, pages single spaced of news roundup to read. Yes. So let's, we're going to go through this without a lot of commentary. Let's skip through. First of all, the most important news this week is the Electoral College affirmed Joe Biden as the 46th president of the United States. I thought that was like two years ago. Yeah. It feels like <laughs> it feels like it? years ago. OK. Mm-hmm. Joe Biden will nominate Native American Representative Dave Haland as Interior Secretary. Uh, she is the first Native American in a cabinet. And of any presidents, and she has been the U.S. representative from New Mexico's first congressional district since 2019. Uh, Joe Biden will also nominate, you might have heard of this guy, Pete Buttigieg, to be his secretary of transportation. Uh, Mayor Pete would be the first openly gay cabinet secretary to be confirmed should his nomination make it through the chamber. I am I do want to comment on this because the whining about, about Pete Buttigieg and I Twitter... I just, yeah. oh, well, he doesn't know anything about transportation. Well, he doesn't know anything about da, da, da. A small city mayor in the Midwest, folks, is the best person to have as far as profile in transportation secretary. Mm-hmm. He is His city is on the route between Cleveland and Chicago. But if you are a coastal elite, <laughs> and, I, and I really do think that's who's cl- complaining about this. Uh, and mm-hmm. and it, transportation to and from Wichita doesn't matter to you. To and from Birmingham or Nashville or Columbus, Ohio or Pittsburgh or Buffalo or, you know, all of these cities, Denver, all these cities in flyover country mm-hmm. that have huge transportation issues, bridges falling down, highways collapsing. Uh, they need high high speed rail, and the perfect person, the absolute perfect person to put in the head of the transportation department, is a small city mayor from the Midwest. Trust me on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that's that's I, that's my rant. <laughs> well, I, I should also mention that you and I were talking about this very subject, and mm-hmm. I, I opined, "What if?" I've been everywhere by Johnny Cash were actually written by a New York Times op-ed page. <laughs> and it's, you know, I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. Cross the Hudson Bear, man. I breathe the L.A. air. Of yeah. travel, I've had my share, man. I've been everywhere. L.A., D.C., New York City, and L.A., D.C., New York City, and L.A., D.C., New York City. And that's the <laughs> end of the song. Yep. yep. That's it. Yeah. So, uh, you know what? You're forgetting the Pacific Coast Highway. <laughs> yeah, well, that's L.A. That's the Los Angeles area. Um, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Acela, 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 right? <laughs> I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. No, you haven't. You really haven't. And yeah. I am, you know what? You're not going to get any gripes out of me until Joe Biden appoints someone worse than Betty DeVos. Yeah, right. uh, Betsy DeVos, Betsy yeah. Because you know what? I'm not going to play the, you know, I didn't get everything I want, so I'm going to just bitch for you know, four to eight years. Nope, nope, sorry. Uh-uh, not going to not gonna no, make that mistake no. again. I, we Mute. will hold... We will hold Joe Biden and the Biden administration within our power accountable to deliver on what we think they need to deliver and where they're making a mistake. But we're not going to play this penny any shit of bitching about every single thing they do because, well, we've gotten used to bitching about presidents. So right. that would be where our where – our, where our Well, it makes us right. feel intelligent to yeah. complain. That's, that is really it. Yeah. Yes. Um, 
We already mentioned Donald Trump is completely checked out for the next 30 days. No one is in charge. And there's a lot of bad COVID news. Mm -hmm. Uh, The good news is there is a vaccine where there's a second vaccine and we're working on it. It looks like Donald Trump is either punishing blue states by withholding vaccine or simply just completely fucking up the distribution of the vaccine. Yeah. Um, Helps helps on the way. I'm just so sick of this man that I'm not willing to use podcast time to talk about it. Well, and I do want to mention that um, the reason the virus toll is so horrifying is because that was the plan. Right. We found herd that immunity we, was the plan. We, it right. was like, we want people to be infected so we can get to herd. And that was the official Trump administration policy. Let lots of people get sick, do nothing about it, because then we can get to herd and that'll be a good thing. And that is that is definitely into Mengele Nazi territory. Well, and the the entirety of that argument was based on the reasoning that we have to get the re- economy relaunched in time for the election so yep. Donald Trump can be reelected. Yeah. It it was completely a political shenanigan. Absolutely. It was horrifying. It was it was yeah. killing Americans to make the yeah. dear leader happy. Here, here is here is the uh reasonable amount of death that we can expect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And based um, on bullshit science by the way. Bullshit science. Um Another 885,000 Americans filed new claims for unemployment benefits last week, the highest weekly total in three months. Another 455,000 people applied for pandemic unemployment assistance, uh, a federal program for the self-employed gig workers and others who don't qualify to refer traditional unemployment benefits. Um, before the pandemic, weekly jobless claims typically numbered about 225,000. Yeah. So it's four times that. Yeah, it's very, very bad. Uh, federal court dismisses the Republican challenge to Republic to Georgia's use of drop boxes, processing of absentee ballots prior to the election day, and signature match procedures. First of three cases brought by the GOP to suppress the vote in the upcoming Senate runoff. They're doing it out in the open now. Trump is diverting 75 percent of most donations for the Georgia Senate runoff elections that he's raising with his new Save America Political Action Committee. He plans to fund his fu- his own future political activities. The other 25% is allegedly going to the Republican National Committee. Uh, a bit of history. Donald Trump in 2017 tweeted, Putin and I discussed forming an impenetrable cybersecurity unit so that election hacking and many other negative things will be guarded. Now it's 2020 and Russian hackers have breached at least five federal agencies as part of a months-long global espionage campaign. They compromised Treasury and Commerce and the State Department, the Department of Homeland Security, and the National Institute of Health and parts of the Pentagon. They also accessed networks that maintain the U.S. nuclear weapons stockpile. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency warned that these hacks pose a grave risk to government networks and critical infrastructure. Now, how did the Trump administration respond? First, by not saying anything. Donald Trump hasn't said a fucking word about his boss, Vladimir Putin. However, the acting defense secretary, Chris Miller, has ordered a Pentagon-wide halt to cooperation with the transition of the Biden team. Shocking officials across the Defense Department, senior administrative officials, they told Axios. Pretty clear that they do not want the Biden people asking a lot of snoopy questions about the largest Russian hack of all time, which went unnoticed for six to eight months. Trump's Mar-a-Lago neighbors say he can't live there. (laughs) (laughs) He signed an agreement in 1993 that he would not make that a residence. Yeah. Uh, Betsy DeVos urged career employees at the Education Department to, quote, be the resistance when the Biden administration takes over next month. Business Insider is reporting that Jared Kushner helped create a Trump campaign shell company that secretly paid the president's family members, the so-called president's family members, Mm -hmm. and spent $617 million, that's over half a billion dollars, in re-election cash. Yeah. Uh, This week, Rupert Murdoch got the COVID vaccine the day after On the Rupert uh, Murdoch network, Tucker Carlson spent his entire show sowing doubt about the COVID vaccine. Senator Mike Lee blocked legislation to establish national museums dedicated to the histories of Latino Americans and American women, arguing the museums would further divide an already divided nation with an array of segregated, separate but equal museums for hyphenated identity groups. (sighs) 
Disgraced federal criminal and Trump partner recipient Michael Flynn went on Newsmax this week to advise that Trump could order, quote, military capabilities to swing states and rerun an election in each of those states. You know, martial law. Hundreds of people skipped Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's indoor holiday party in the wake of health concerns. 900 invites went out and roughly 70 people showed up. Uh, no, 70 RSVP'd and even fewer than that showed up. Oh, 70 RSVP'd and fewer than that showed up. The next day, Mike Pompeo yeah. uh, announced that he had been exposed to COVID-19, uh, but was showing no symptoms. Uh, Mitch McConnell has grudgingly included $600 checks in the COVID stimulus plan only after hearing that opposition to that could cost Republicans the Senate in the runoffs in Georgia. It should cost them the runoffs in Georgia anyway. Yeah, it, I, I'm done. I'm just done. I, I can't believe it's close. Yeah. It, it, they're so crooked. The two candidates they have are terrible. All right. And in local news, last week we talked about Illinois Congressman Darren LaHood being one of the 125 congressional Republicans who signed on to the openly seditious Texas, Texas plot to toss out the now certified 2020 election results and illegally install Trump for a second term. LaHood still won't answer questions about his betrayal of American democracy, but he did sign and excuse me, but he did write a long op-ed in the Peoria newspaper. Yeah. Like I said, at the top of the show, the first 20 paragraphs are how sweet Donald Trump's ass smells <laughs> and how he walks on water and is a delightful man. And that, you know, whatever the results are, you know, there's a process and we have to observe the process. And uh, please don't ask me any other questions about this. Let's move on. Um, and finally, the Speaker of the Illinois House, Democrat Mike Madigan, is corrupt as fuck and should have been tossed out years ago. That's not going to happen because the Illinois House panel ended its probe into his involvement in a comet bribery scheme without doing much of anything. I don't understand that. He's such a weight around their neck at this point. Yeah, he, about, he's costing them seats. Yeah. At this point, that should be the point. This is how you get Republicans running things, is you fuck things up so badly. It's like, yeah, we know he's corrupt. He's been corrupt for decades. We're going to just keep putting up with it. If, you have, if you're in a position like that, you have a lot of sway over what people say. And the, more, the longer you're there, the more power you have. He's been there forever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Ralphie, and Ralphie is a kitty that belongs to my niece. My niece, Zoe, got a new kitty this year, and uh, I'm not sure if Ralphie is named after the main character in A Christmas Story. I think he is. And, of course, Ralphie eats freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor, I want to thank Loreen T on Twitter for this exchange. Um, Rust Belt Rebel tweeted this week a question. Why does my cat insist on knocking over the massive bag of cat food and eating directly from the bag, not from the kibble from the same bag that I put into his dish? He won't even eat the kibble. He knocked all over the floor. Instead, he sits on it while he sticks half his body inside the bag of food. And Lorene T. on Twitter replied, freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. Damn right. <laughs> right. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and put his entire body inside the bag to demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. And you can visit Ralphie at our Facebook page. Or website. He is under the tree behaving himself for now. For now. <laughs> and you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Uh, we want to let everyone know that we are sending out a Christmas card this year. Um, we call it our Stop the Steal postcard. <laughs> Uh, Drift Class put together a composite of all of the dumpster fire uh, products that are being sold this year uh, with Dumpster Fire 2020 on them. Oh, it was not you, nearly all the products, Blue It's not all, but it's many of them. Mm -hmm. uh, you have many of them on our I do. holiday postcard. Mm -hmm. uh, Drift Class, as you may remember, uh, coined the term 
dumpster fire in 2006. I did. And so uh, he has stolen back all of those dumpster fires and put them on our holiday card. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you donate to us on Patreon, uh, if you donate to us monthly on PayPal, or if you had donated to us just out of the blue uh, in the month of November, uh, you should be getting a postcard from us. If you are not... Any in any of one of those groups, and you would like to receive a postcard from us, just send us a Christmas card, sure. and we will be happy to send one back to you. I am now working on the overseas cards. There's a handful of people who we love dearly who send us donations from across the seas. Uh, I'm probably going to email you a picture. It, it's just not, I don't trust the mail at this point um, yeah. to get the card to you on t- in time. So, uh, I'll, I will be in touch if you are a Patreon or a PayPal uh, subscriber and you are uh, outside of the U.S., watch your email. I'll be sending something to you as soon as I can. And uh, again, send us a Christmas card. We'll be glad to send a Christmas card back to you. And I want to thank Junior Dude because Junior Dude helped me stamp all those postcards and That's did a, a good job. Postcards. That's a lot of yeah, it was a, it was a good chunk of postcards and he stamped them for me. I really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. I know times are tough these days, but if you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job, and it is a labor of love. We love you all very much. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media. And thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, as you know, Blue Gal, a couple of the Internet Kitties here had to go to the vet this week for booster shots. And they were yes. not happy about it. They objected very strongly. So I lied to them and told them they were going for the Rona. And they were getting them early because they were very, very special. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2019-2020. DGBG Productions.